Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very special edition of the Game for All show. This is, you know, this is out of the blue. We're kind of having a second episode this week. As you know, I wasn't on episode 95 this past Monday. But if you're watching on YouTube, you will already see that I don't have Luke or Sean with me. And that's because I have... I have our friend, Jeff, from Analog Stick Gaming. Hello, Jeff. How are you? Oh, doing well. Yourself? I'm very good. This is this has been a little while. You're you're an official partner of our G4A network now. Um, and you've been cranking out the reviews lately, Jeff. <laughs> and working a full-time job. Yes, um, yes, absolutely. So why don't you tell people what are we here to review and uh, why are you on? <laughs> Sure. Um, so we both have been given review access to Devolver Digital's Trek to Yomi, um, which is kind of their um, their new like 2D or two two and a half D side scrolling samurai game that was announced um, quite a while ago. Um, it's finally come out, and uh, we're here to talk about it. Yes, at this time that you are hearing this review, you know, um, it's also important to say we both have written reviews. Jeff on his site. And mine is on theouterhaven.net. Both of those will be linked in the YouTube description. But uh, yeah, you can actually go and play the game right now. It, it, it should be, as far as I'm aware, released right now. Um, and it is on Game Pass. So if you're a Game Pass subscriber, uh, I think the way I'd sum it up for you, if you don't want any spoilers, is this one is at least worth trying out um so go and go and do that basically yeah uh jeff so before we get into kind of spoiler territory because it's hard to actually talk about where this game goes and how the gameplay evolves without spoiling certain (laughs) aspects of the game most of the spoilers in the title itself right so absolutely um so before we get into that what are your kind of top level thoughts about the game in general, you know, with no spoilers involved? Sure. Um, I think it's fine. I think it is an absolutely serviceable game. I don't think it is terribly offensive in any one category. I think the gameplay is super fun. It takes a little while to get there. Um, It's not a long game as well, too. Like it's five to six hours. I mean, if you ignore most of the collectibles, you can probably burn through it in three, but um, it is, it is really good. Like, I think that the, the gameplay, like the combat itself is super satisfying. And again, once you get to a certain point and we'll talk about that, um, I think the story and characters are pretty forgettable for me, especially the villain who feels will, like he's uh, just there to be there. Yeah. We'll talk about story in a minute for sure. Um, I would say that story is the weakest part of this game. Um, and we'll, we'll explain why as we get into it. For me, I'm a little bit higher than you. Uh, admittedly, I did only play it through once and you played it through twice. And I think that second playthrough maybe took it a, took away a little bit for you. I know you were a bit higher on it after the first playthrough. And then when you played it through that second time, you sort of lowered your score slightly. I think if it would have had a new game plus to bring that combat right from the start yeah i would be way more hot on it Um, but it's that first it's that first chapter where you're yeah it takes a little while to get going doesn't it for sure uh yeah for me i think this is a great game i think it's got some quite unique presentation for as far as video games go uh you know with the 2.5 the kind of art style and aesthetics to the gameplay mixed with the black and white visuals i actually think this game is beautiful at times i think it's a really stunning game um and yeah as you said jeff about the gameplay it's just super fun and we'll explain why as we talk a bit more about it but i really do recommend playing this game like it's worth your time as jeff said it's about five or six hours probably less than that if you ignore the collectibles or if you're on a low difficulty um you know so yeah go and check it out it really is worth your time and now for some spoilers jeff because we need to talk about the story of the of Mm -hmm. this game really we need to tackle that first this is like 
I go up and down on it because for me, I like certain aspects of what they're doing with the story. There was, <laughs> there was a twist at the end of chapter three that I didn't see coming. And therefore, um, from that point on, I was actually quite into the story and I wanted to see where it was going. But as you mentioned earlier, the biggest problem for me was the main villain just was totally forgettable. He could have been replaced with any other villain from any other video game. And he, it just, he was literally you... the equivalent of like when you play, um, what is it, Shadow of War or Shadow of Mordor, and you kill like the higher up guy and then the lower tier guy is like, I'm the leader now. It felt like mm -hmm. that energy where he was just this bandit who was just the last person left alive in the village is like, I'm, I guess I'm the leader of the bandits now. Like, and then he takes over. Like he doesn't. So for, yeah. so for people who just don't throw know, away though, how would you set up the story of Trek to Yomi? If people wanted to know what the story is about without yeah. being spoiled too much on it, how would you kind of set it up? Um, I think it's mainly like you play as Hiroki and I could be pronouncing that entirely wrong. Um, it's basically his quest for justice and how he sees fit because there's choices that you can make um, to fall in line with three basic paths and how you go about questing to solve that story is on you. So the story essentially is your village is ransacked at the very beginning of the game when you're a young Hiroki who's still kind of learning the ways of the, of the blade and as you encounter your your teacher there, he's kind of locked in battle with this um, this bad guy, um, and basically you have your encounter with him, and you kind of learn your limits as a you know a student essentially, and then years later, that villain kind of resurfaces when you've grown up a bit, um, when you've learned more of um, being a samurai even though you don't learn any new abilities or have more health absolutely. it's like he did nothing in that time absolutely and the and the and then we won't spoil what happens after that in the story because i do think it's reasonably interesting after yeah. those first three chapters um i think this game is six chapters long is that right it's i believe so that sounds about right um and there are three different endings but i don't know how different they really are i've only done one of them i think jeff's done two of them yeah how, they're mostly how... just different in dialogue okay i mean i mean there's there's some different scenes for sure um yeah. that are based on against like uh, you know the choices that you make because um, this is what i was just going to say for me where i liked the story was again that twist at the end of chapter three and then kind of gaining some control over the narrative and having those couple of choices to make and feeling like I got my ending. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and it, there was part of it where it's like, if the start of this story was stronger and you had a slightly more, mem even a slightly more memorable villain, I actually think this would have been a good story because it's yes it is using tropes and it's kind of doing this story that we've seen a thousand times before in other mediums but it also has those that interesting twist in the middle which which leads you down a really interesting road we'll mm -hmm. say and um and i think it it does this clever thing of having the different endings to almost entice you to replay just to see what is different. And I also think that, you know, the game isn't so long that replaying it is a chore either. Like I look forward to replaying this game. Yeah. And, and part of that is I want to see the other endings of the game, even though the story isn't that strong. It like, yeah, is weird. Cause the way I would, <laughs> if I was to sum up the story, it's okay. It just has forgettable characters. And yeah, that's like kind it's, of the it's, problem. It being so short as it is, a lot of characters don't get any time to grow. Even Hiroki um, barely Absolutely. gets a lot of time. Um, your ending, the, the path that you chose, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep it vague. 
I don't feel that particular path is earned because I don't get enough time. You don't get character. enough time for that. So yeah, that yeah. makes sense. With I agree with the, that. With the way that I went through it, um, for me, it felt like a natural progression of what Hiroki was attempting to do. Yeah. And Absolutely. the the other path feels a little more extreme, even though I can see it because his training is not as extensive, I think, as his teacher would have wanted. Okay. So I think he lacks that type of thing. It's it's like it's like the whole thing with like, you know, with like Anakin, like why he turned bad <laughs> is because he ignored a lot of his training. He didn't have proper training. So he has this path set before him that feels like a natural progression for him. Whereas the path that I picked initially for Hiroki felt like a natural path for him. Yeah. Cause he had something to live up to. That makes sense. I think for me, the way I played it was I picked what I feel I would have picked in his position. Um, yeah. And therefore that was why I ended up with the ending that I did, but I do agree with you. The ending that I got didn't feel quite earned enough because I didn't spend enough time with that character to make it as meaningful as it should have been. And you don't get that time. It's not like you ignored any content or anything like that. Absolutely. But Absolutely. Um, like, yeah, unless like the, I think that's the nature of a shorter game, of course. Yeah. Like, I and, think this game does some really good stuff with the story in terms of like where it goes, not essentially how it's being told. Cause like the Yomi stuff is fantastic. Yes. And like, that is the one thing that I wish this game was longer for, even if it was like another because two hours. Because when you longer. get into that second half, the, it is brilliant. It's great, right? It is brilliant. It's fantastic. Yeah. Everything's firing on all cylinders. All the encounters are fun. Yeah. Um, all the enemies that you're fighting and, essentially and we'll are talk fun. In a minute, we'll talk in a minute about how the gameplay differs from the first half of the story to when you have that pivotal moment in the story and you start the trek to Yomi, if you will, that kind of, the way that changes the gameplay over the, over the course of the remaining hours is, is phenomenal. Like, I don't think I've ever had quite as much fun with this style of game in terms of the gameplay and how it evolves over time and just builds and builds and builds upon itself to become something so much better by the end of the game and like this game for me and i mentioned it in my review is this feels as if this was a companion game around the first onomusha like you'd get those games on the 3ds and the vita and the wii where they were not the same game we got on xbox and playstation but they had that that same kind of tone and feel because this gets some isometric shots that feel like you're playing on a Absolutely. You know, like yeah. there's a, a stairwell where you come down and you can either wrap around the whole stairwell or you can climb down the little part that's broken. And all that feels like, it feels like an Onimusha game. And in some ways, this game goes into some of that territory. It doesn't go the full whole, the full nines on, on it, but it feels like that kind of game. Absolutely. So talking about the gameplay, because the way I kind of summarize the gameplay in my review is starts off basic but builds into something that's wonderful and enjoyable in every single second yeah um you know because for so basically the way the gameplay works here is you've got essentially a light and a heavy attack and a block and a parry right as well as being able to move left and right etc and then as you start to go through the game you unlock different combos and these combos enable you to deal with encounters differently. And also while you're getting these combos, you're also encountering different types of enemies as well that have their own set of attacks and you have to yeah. kind of try and deal with them in a different way. But then you're also getting on top of that stuff, access to ranged weapons as well which i wasn't actually expecting from this game so that yeah, you was... get the bow shuriken um the bow and then i don't even know how to pronounce it but it's like a it's, it's like, like a like japanese a cannon, hand cannon right? yeah essentially yeah. yeah 
Um, and those weapons are are fun and like yeah, the resources yeah. to refill your ammo are literally every 10 steps yeah yeah so you're never it it feels like the purpose of this gameplay was all about making it as fun for the player as possible while also being challenging when you maybe haven't got those combos and yeah and things like that because when i did just have the basic combos to start with I was struggling with some of the encounters where you would have more enemies kind of yeah, surrounding and you, you. Like the the moment that Hiroki goes into the forest with his companions and is separated for narrative reasons. Yes. That first combo you get, I think it's just like YX or XY or something mm -hmm. like that. That moment is when the game actually gets fun for me because yeah. before that, like you can block, but you can't and you can turn around. And I think that turning around button is really not responsive um there's tons of times where it just would not turn around and my character is walking backwards towards an enemy and i'm like oh my god just just turn around oh by the end but, I, I was doing that on purpose but i'll explain yeah. why I'll yeah. explain and i mean why. like once you unlock that combo attack to simply turn around while attacking yeah. that absolutely made the game better and combat of course is an amazing like part of this game and it is one of the main parts of the gameplay. But we do have exploration as well. And there's a few puzzles in there. So I want to, before we go a little bit deeper on the gameplay, I want to sort of talk about those. Because one thing I found about exploration is it's the perfect balance between kind of optional and also very meaningful. Because you don't have to explore in this game. Although it's very apparent when you can and where there's collectibles. Cause it's like the whole game is on this lane and Absolutely. there'll be, there'll be so much room around you and you'll be like, I just want to, I, I want to go down there. Nope. He's just stuck to a lane. Yeah. And the moment you get any freedom to run around, you can like, look and there's find a collectible something. here. Yeah. <laughs> like Absolutely. And, and I don't mind that in design terms, just cause it's, it does a good job of guiding the player. Yeah. But what I like about the exploration is the fact that you can find combos, you can find health upgrades and stamina upgrades. It makes exploration meaningful because and combat things... is stamina based as well, too. So the more you can yeah. find of that, the more combos you can pull off. Absolutely. And the more health you have essentially for, Absolutely. for some attacks. So, so the exploration and, and engaging in exploration actually makes a difference to the combat because of what you unlock through doing that. Of course, there are collectibles as well, which I think are mostly kind of throwaway. And from from at least what I could tell, they literally are just collectibles. You don't really need yeah, to like, go out of your way to get them. Yeah, like all the collectibles for me personally, now, like they had a collaboration with the, um, what is it? The Edo Museum of, uh, or Edo Museum of Tokyo. I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Um, it feels kind of like they just like took pictures of all the stuff and then copied and pasted all the placards for the information. Like the Yomi stuff is very cool, okay. you know, because the that's centered around cool. mythology. Don't get me wrong. The collectibles are cool. I just think that I would have liked one of those collectibles to be something meaningful in the game. So like, maybe it was like, oh, if you collect so many of these things, you get something right yeah that and i was just thinking about this right now bit. and this would have helped your playthrough go on um imagine if the collectibles were like oh this was a scarf that belonged to her yeah and then it had that story tied to it or yeah. like you go back to the 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 temple or the village whatever and it's like oh master used to take me here if those yeah. collectibles if were tied to those characters to it, yeah yeah it would have i think deepened the narrative and absolutely. your connection to these characters absolutely i agree with that um the other thing which i'm sure you want to touch on because i know you have some things to say about it, is the puzzles in the game and there aren't many but they are there right yeah they're, they are they're, there. they're they're obtuse while being also incredibly simple yeah. Like you'll get these, like the first time you encounter a puzzle, it's it doesn't symbols, tell you how right? to solve it. And it puts a symbol here, here, and here. And it gives you this circle thing to rotate. And I'm sitting here. I'm like, okay, if I put the one cursor here and the one cursor there yeah, and the one yeah. cursor here, that makes sense. But putting them all in one line up makes no sense. 
Yeah, it doesn't tell you to do that, right? And then it's... like if they were in the order of where they are in position to you, to me that makes sense. Yeah, no, but I get that. I get that. I for think sure. you do that four times. And then the other, the other puzzle is the one that you get later in the game, which is to do with the pillars, where you have yeah. to activate them in a certain order. Um, that one was fairly easy. So yeah, I'm kind of with you. It's weird because it was one. I kept running around and ignoring that light. <laughs> I didn't even see the light for the while. And I'm like, I'm just like hoofing it to one side. And I'm like, oh, dear Lord. And then once I saw the light, I'm like, oh, of course, I'm a freaking it's, idiot. And that's what I mean. Like, it's one of those games where in a way, I actually want to say it's quite clever design because these puzzles are super simple, but they don't seem simple at first. Yeah, and there's there is one thing that and it'll tie into one of my other complaints later on, but there's a part where you're in in Yomi and there's there's different um I guess the world reacts differently to how you move around it there. And there's these platform switches that you can stand on. And there's one of them that's so far in the distance. And because it's all black and white, it blends into everything. And it's so far back that you can't even see it unless you literally run around and accidentally stumble upon it. Yeah. So, th so this is what I was going to say is one of my complaints about the gameplay and one of, one of my only negative points on this game in general, really, is... The camera combined with the visual style of the black and white visuals can sometimes make navigation and other things in the game super difficult. Yeah, especially like... if an enemy is like, if you're with an enemy far away in the distance because that shot wants that tree waving yeah. in the wind, which looks amazing. The art direction yeah. and, and direction in this game is fantastic. But when you have this tiny little character in the back and you're like, did I stun him? Can I pull off that assassination? You have no idea. So I just kept slashing. Yeah. Um, and that that brings me on nicely to some of my favorite parts of the combat in the game. And that is the stun attacks and being able to execute the finishers and them giving you a little bit of health back. I think that that's super clever. Even and blocking. You um like if you counter during a parry you'll get health back as well too yeah so i think all that stuff it almost feels like the combat was refined to within an inch of its life because they always seem to introduce something new at exactly the right time and and things never get boring because of that whether it be a new enemy type whether it be a new combo and you know <laughs> In that second half of the game, this will be spoilers for people, so I apologize, but you encounter some really interesting enemy types that do completely different things to what you faced before. You know, like one of them that I'll call out is essentially a witch, right? Yeah, and she can summon back those that you've killed unless you rush her, kill her, and then stop that summoning. Yeah, and there are some really other cool ones as well. So uh, we'll leave those for you to discover yourselves. But it's the it's this thing of I was just playing this game, and I feel like every ten minutes or so, I was like, "Oh, I've got a new combo. Let's try it," and it was super cool. And I got to the yeah. point where I was using the same couple of combos all the time, but it was so only good. because I enjoyed them so much, and it's. Like one of the ones I forget what it's called, but it was basically the ability to turn and hit the guy and stun him. So if I wasn't facing him, yeah, I could kind of backslash him and stun him and then have a finisher. That was really cool because it was just like I would do that, I would finish the one guy, then I'd finish the other guy who was now behind me, and yeah. it just worked really well. And the flow that you can get into with combat in this game is it just feels ridiculously satisfying mm -hmm. like you can get through some of these encounters without ever even being hit you yeah know? like there's some there's some super fun combos that are so great and when you combine that with the stunning and the assassination and like there's there's times where like i charge a guy stun him he'd be stunned i turn around 
whip a Boshurukin at another guy, kill him, turn mm -hmm. back around, pull an assassination by like going past him and then the blade backwards. Yes. And it's cool. It's very, very cool. And some of the camera angles sell that off. It great. looks cool. Yeah, yeah. You do get a few times where you learn a combo where there's no enemies present and you can't perform that combo. Absolutely. You can't practice it out yeah. until you get to the next character. And this game does allow you a lot of freedom in experimentation on combat and pulling off different abilities and practicing and dying because they're shrines. Yeah. Like almost every 15 steps that replenish your health and save yeah. the game. They they, they function they are almost convenient. like they function almost like a uh, what are they called? Like a Elden Ring type situation like a site of grace where yeah. you rest at this shrine in but they don't respawn the enemies that's one yes. clarification as well too is that they they yeah they work as essentially just like a like a checkpoint that replenishes your health yeah um and I you think can there's... also find some hidden ones which i really yeah. like is not every shrine not every shrine is on the golden is path. on them yeah not every shrine is on the golden path that and... kind of like confused me as well too because i'm like okay you'd have two paths given to you and then you see a shrine i'm like oh well that's the way i have to go and then i go this way and i just get into like where i feel is the golden path and i'm like oh and then once i realized and i i haven't confirmed this this is just pure speculation mm -hmm. is the path you need to take is the one that is lit the one that oh, is dark is the side area i think interesting i wonder if um, that is the case that would be if we can get some clarification on that at any point, we will let you know. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I just loved this game. Like, I just loved playing the game. And Yeah, combat is great. Like, that's the selling point of this game for sure. Um, yeah, and another selling point of this game, and I said it a little bit earlier on, is the visuals and just the overall art style of the game. And yeah okay the camera does sometimes make things difficult or the black and white kind of color palette can make it hard to see certain things but when this game looks good it looks really good i'll say the environments look absolutely stunning yeah so this is the what character I was models point out is in cut scenes it's weird because the characters stick out as not looking as good as the rest it's why the camera is so pulled back they got these like low quality models and it's a shame that these closer ones don't yeah. have just a slightly improved model because some of them are really yeah. bad and also the other thing that is annoying about that is the actual camera work in this game is brilliant like you can see that they've been influenced by you know kurosawa movies and and things because they are filming it in the game like a kurosawa movie yeah and they, like they you can understand. have the film grain over off, on or off like you can you can choose that i i went with it off because i was already having a tough time picking out details in the background of course that... of course i kept it on because i liked the visual style personally and i liked what they were going for um but i can understand why that definitely would add to some of the difficulties there um but for me it's that thing of this whole game felt like a love letter to kurosawa it felt like they really respected what he had done as a filmmaker and they wanted to kind of pay respect to that while also using video games to kind of put their own spin on it and as you said about the character models there it is a shame because if you have some better looking character models even in cutscenes this game would look great like if you improved the character models here it would be a great looking game and just for those scenes too because i mean like yeah um naughty dog was notorious for this as well where you'd have the, the cutscene model and the gameplay model yeah and earlier games you could tell the difference yeah. but absolutely absolutely so you know but at the end of the day luckily those are kind of minor things right because you you do notice them but as you said you're not really you're not really in this game for... And I think there's only four or five cutscenes. Yeah, you're not really in, like in this game for the cutscenes. You're in this game for the vistas that you walk past. You're in this game for the combat. You're in this game for the exploration. And maybe a couple of twists and turns here and there. You know, there, like I said, there's some really fun enemy types. 
all of that sort of stuff. Um, before we kind of leave this review and, and, and you know, finish up, what was your technical experience like with the game? Did the game run okay for you? Did yeah. you have any issues? Um, one last thing just about the environments. Just, I just didn't want to cut you off. Go on. Was like, there's a lot of really cool animations that happen during fights, like towers crushing behind you yeah. and like there's you're in fire, and you know, a fiery there's village. One, and I didn't realize this till earlier on when I was replaying a little bit. There's a bit where a tree falls and it actually blocks off a path, but you can get there quick enough to get behind the tree if you run for it. And it's yeah. like, that's super cool because that's... And there's like environment kills as well too like mm. causing that flood was really neat yes i did that half the time i'd kill the enemies and then find it and i'm like watching the flood go down i'm like that would have been cool and then just reload the checkpoint and then do it yeah yeah but like yeah like like the environments and stuff like they look fantastic and those those camera shots are great yeah. um yeah i had a couple glitches i had one where i could not turn around oh, okay at at all like i i hit the button and it would do absolutely nothing and so i'd i'd head back out of frame like to the next set and then go back and then i could turn around um i had a few instances where i couldn't attack oh like interesting he just, he just would not swing um i think i had one crash but okay. so my i think that's it off the top so, of my head so my technical experience oh, was go on i did have one i did go have on. another one go ahead I was just going to say my technical experience was slightly better than yours. I still had some problems, but I didn't have any problems in gameplay. Luckily, one of the main ones I had was there was one specific cutscene where there was just no audio. At That's all. the one I had. And it's I'm <laughs> guessing it's the second choice, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah, um, like the moment you defeat the boss and go to make the choice there's no audio for that entire conversation that reminds me actually before we move on i'll come back to my technical experience in a minute but we didn't talk about the boss fights here i really yeah. liked them what did you think um i think the boss fights are fine i think the first one is just literally a much stronger version of a regular bandit yeah, for sure. You no, know, like he'll he'll one. stand back and then send some people in, and I think that's mainly just so yet you the can pull off parries and The later ones I encounters. really enjoyed, though. The later ones yeah, I did. All, like again, all the stuff that's based off Yomi mm -hmm. is great. What about like, that final of... boss fight? Um, like that it was okay because it, it had literally just felt stages, like stages, right? Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, the the first part of it was typical. Yeah, I the, agree. The last the last part was fine. Yeah. But I think the the second and third uh, boss. Yeah, are I agree. That, so that's what I was just going to say. I think the second and third boss are great because they're really unique and, and they kind of stand out. That final boss for me fell into the typical trap of now we're going to throw everything at you kind of all at once. And you just have to remember all the things and deal with it. It wasn't anything really unique you know they could have done during that second phase of that final boss fight i thought they were going to do something really interesting for a minute because of what the character does and then they just didn't and it was like oh okay now i yeah. just have to deal with this and this at the same time <laughs> that first phase i managed to get through without using any of my weapons and stuff so did I, I, mean, I i mean sword yes but and then the second phase i'm just like bow 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 <laughs> bow bow shuriken bow shuriken like and like took like half his health practically and i'm like okay all right let's do this nice nice but yeah um, like the and the the ending super abrupt especially the one that i got um i think i think it's fine um, I don't think mine was nice. The fantastic. flow of my ending was decent in the sense of you have that final fight, something happens, and then you kind of see a final scene. Um, yeah. So my ending was decent. It felt like the flow was okay there. But again, going back to what I said earlier, because of not spending enough time with certain characters in the game, it didn't feel like it was earned. Yeah, and that was the major problem with that one. I kind of wish there was a chapter select so I could go back and just 
do particular chapters because there's parts <laughs> of this game that I like way more than others. Yeah, yeah. And I just kind of wanted to replay that stuff. And like going back and playing it the second time, going through that initial chapter, I was like, oh my God, this yeah. is so, so bad. We'll talk, so that's what I want to talk about at the end after I bring up some of my other technical issues is things we would have liked to have seen uh you know added to this like in future maybe things they could add to the game and, and stuff like that um but i did have a couple of other technical issues other than the audio cutting out in that one scene <laughs> i also had weird frame dropping when i would enter certain yeah. new areas and it would I be like twice quite, it would be like quite bad and then disappear and be fine um, yeah it's like hitching yeah so that would happen, and it would only ever be when entering new areas. So I think that's important to kind of, you know, say, because it never happened during combat for me. I never had any dropped frames during combat. Um, other, other than that, I, I didn't have anything. So yeah, my, I didn't have any crashes or anything like that. So my technical experience was better than yours it sounds like um yeah i had one one crash okay but it was like i don't know 15 minutes in okay interesting so it was it wasn't it was um but yeah for me you hit on something earlier that i'd really i wish this game had and that is a new game plus so that i could take all my combos in and I, use I get them it makes the, the game, game shorter. Maybe you make the enemies stronger, but it yeah. gives you that ability to have that fun combat. And you, know, and you know, the other thing I'd love, and I genuinely think would suit this game, is some sort of endless run type mode where yeah. you're just where you're just fighting enemies, and then maybe every so many screens you have to fight a boss, and it's kind of how long can you survive? I, I think that would be really cool. And I think that the gameplay is strong enough in this game to support that thing. Like the yeah. gameplay, I, I genuinely can't understate how good the gameplay is. Like it's genuinely great and it's genuinely so much fun to play. Yes, it does take a little while to get there. But what I would say is because this game is so short, it's worth sticking with. You yeah, know, it's, it's like forty minutes, yeah, um, to an hour, uh, before the combos start to open up to the point where combat is very good. Yeah, absolutely. So, finally, then, before we finish off and send people to read our full written reviews, what what is your kind of now that we've spoken through everything and we can be well, a there's bit one more, last there's on. one last bit as well too is and this is purely a me issue it was the same issue i had with jean one seven was that this game is entirely in japanese ah, now jean one yes. seven is in is, is in a different language um but i don't mind where there's no english dub in regards to the historical accuracy i was gonna i was gonna bring to this do. up yeah i was gonna bring um, this up because these subtitles disappear so quickly and they're so white quickly. on white yeah, there's so many cutscenes where it's kind of like all the, the all the lettering is just on a white background Absolutely. with white Absolutely. font. Absolutely, and and from a I get it, like this is an indie game and everything, but from an accessibility standpoint, I'm fine with not having an English dub. That's not a problem for me, but at least have subtitles that are more accessible to people. Like I sometimes could not read the subtitle before it disappeared. Even mm -hmm. if I was stood there not moving, I literally right? had to stop every single time he talked. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, you're done, and move on, just so I could see it. Because I'm not going to be reading it while I'm trying to navigate absolutely um, a path or anything, and then my character is running into the wall while I'm trying to read. Absolutely. So, so, so yeah. I mean, I, I, again, I I get it from a historical point of view of preserving yeah. that era. That's fine. It's that's yeah. something entirely on me. No, no, absolutely, and I. I like I said, for me, it's just it's more of an accessibility thing. I'm glad you brought it up because I almost forgot about it. Um, you know, and it's it is important because at the end of the day, what yeah, okay, maybe you do realize that not many people are gonna play this sort like play this game for the story, 
But at the end of the day, if you've got it there, mm-hmm. people should be able to read it. They should be able it's to. It's probably hard to make sense of some of the gameplay if you've got um, visual imperities as well, too, because there's some parts where you only know your character is there because you can see slight movements in some parts of the background. Absolutely. So I think if there would have been like a highlight mode where your characters were maybe like yeah. outlined that, or something. And that brings me on to, you know, one of the other things I guess that we'd like to see is maybe just adding a couple of accessibility features to this game because this game deserves to be played by by as many people as possible really i think it's it's good enough that it deserves an audience you know it and hopefully and, and the design is simple enough that i think a lot of that stuff is easy to add like adding Absolutely. an outline on on enemies adding like just just a, a background, background to, to the subtitles to the subtitles and <laughs> maybe a way of like tapping through them like you can have the character speak five lines yeah. and then keep tapping through yes that that's fine yeah absolutely i'm with you on that so yeah in in summary then before we kind of close off now that we've spoken through everything you know i'm sure you don't want to give away your full rating here because you want people to kind of go and read your review but how do you feel overall now that we've spoken through everything and what would you say about the game you know is it a tale of two halves because you spoke a lot about how you enjoy certain aspects of the game and certain points in the game a lot more than others or yeah yeah give me the lowdown jeff how are you feeling yeah like again once you get to that point where you're separated from your 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 fellow samurai and start unlocking combos gameplay gets fantastic um i think there's some camera angles that push against the gameplay and make it far harder than it needs to be. Um, I think the story and characters are entirely forgettable for me. Um, I don't think I really like any character other than maybe Hiroki, and that is just because the bar was so low that he can step over it. Um, I think the villain is entirely forgettable. He's got no um, sense of purpose in the narrative other than I am a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the gameplay is fantastic. The The combat and everything you're performing combo-wise is great. Um, once you start unlocking health and stamina, that stuff becomes easier. Um, assassinations, stun attacks, combos, parrying, all that stuff is f- great. Um, I do wish that the turnaround was a little bit more um, responsive. I wish you could maybe flick the right analog stick or something like that to, to orientate yourself. But I, I think the game is great. Like it is definitely worth trying. I mean, it's all again. It's on, it's on Game Pass as well. So the yeah. the bar to entry is just having that subscription. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's terribly expensive to buy even no, out of the gate. Uh, no, uh, I know in the UK it's around fifteen pounds, um, which isn't bad. You know that yeah. that's that's not too bad. Um, but it's it, i don't know like what can i say about it i just i'm a little bit higher than jeff just because although i agree with everything you say about the story jeff i think the characters are forgettable and stuff like that i like the core story that's being told you know Hir- hiroki's story well, and... let me let me put it this way is like the yomi stuff to me is the game's best stuff yeah. but it's the environment it's the aesthetic it's the atmosphere that sells it for that absolutely the story the loose narrative of what you're trekking through there and doing that stuff i think is fine but it's the yomi stuff around the story that is so so good absolutely i agree with that for sure um and i did enjoy from a story aspect as i mentioned earlier i enjoyed that feeling of control over the narrative of the game and having those kind of three choices to make and feeling like I ended up with my own ending to the game that made it a little bit more valuable for me from a, from a story sense, even though I do think the story is the weakest part of the game. I would, I would kind of classify the story as it's okay. And you're probably not going to remember it, in a couple of weeks time it it gets your character to where they need to go 
Absolutely. Is. And then yeah. and then from a gameplay perspective, this game is phenomenal. Like it really is phenomenal. It's it's refined within an inch of its life. It kind of it just flows wonderfully. It it builds upon itself all of the time, the entire time you're playing the game. It it's, makes yeah. You know, it, combat and exploration and the way that they kind of converge and, and, and work off of each other and the way that exploration builds the combat system and what you can do with it is just, it's very well balanced. Like from a mm-hmm. gameplay perspective, it's a super well balanced game that I never didn't enjoy right like uh, there was never a moment where i was like i'm not enjoying this and it's very rare the biggest praise that i can give to a game and and this is what i will give to track to is it's very very rare that i finish a game and i immediately want to replay it and that is what happened with track to so (laughs) whether that be wanting to see the other endings whether it be the amazing gameplay or whether it be the stunning visuals you know there's so much that this game does that feels unique and and kind of is filling a space in the gaming market right now that i think is yeah a like there's there's space. not a massive amount of samurai games like ninjas have them outpace like 40 to 1 yeah. i mean you get ghost of tsushima which is a very very different game um yeah. that's almost kind of like and i don't mean this insulting at all it's like that's like the ubisoft version of a samurai game <laughs> in regards to how it handles certain things whereas this feels almost like like an onamusha yeah. style yeah. game from a different and, a different and the best way i can describe it is if you're someone who's seen a kurosawa movie it is like playing a kurosawa movie like that is what you are essentially for better doing. and for worse because like the storytelling again like a lot of that that era of film is recognized for like the film style and the camera angles and Absolutely. like you know that aspect of it and it it nails all that stuff like um you know like the and it does it by... really respectfully right that, that that's the key thing is it's really yeah. respectful of what its inspirations are and it's also wearing its inspirations on its sleeve. It's not kind of, it's not half doing those inspirations. Do you know what I yeah. mean? We- and I mean, like you get like a game like Sifu, who's not made by a Japanese team and Flying Wild Hog is like a Polish studio, if I'm correct. Um, and even then, like it's speared by, what is it? Um, Leonard Manciari. Yeah, I believe so. And, and a whole bunch of like people that helped and aided with um, they had lots of experts, right? Helping them they, out. They had tons of experts. So it's it's in that same boat of like, this is a team that is not naturally or in any way Japanese trying to make a Japanese inspired product. Absolutely. And they do uh, succeed for sure. Absolutely. And, and, this... and again, like I'm speaking from a completely like white, like yeah Canadian, yeah right? that's, like, that's very that's, i don't know if they know you know it, that but... that's the thing is i i'm someone who loves samurai culture and japanese culture and i i'm no expert on it but what i can tell you as a as a white european person is i do believe the people who made this game made it with love and that love comes out on the screen you you can see it you can see that they love oh, yeah, the good intentions. Like there's no malice in, in any of it, in any representation, like everything is, I think like period accurate. As far as I know, I mean, they, they painstakingly went through all of that stuff. I mean, like, again, they, the, the experts and the, the collaborations they've had were fantastic here. And I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I will leave you on the fact that I would be surprised if you didn't enjoy the gameplay of this game. You know, it's it's one of those things where it can be simple and easy to pick up for anybody, or it can be inc- incredibly like it can have incredible depth, and and you can do some really cool things with it. I think that's where this game most shines, and I do think 
for me, this this is a great game. I would consider it a great game because I think it does a lot more right than it does wrong. And this the for me, the handful of things it does wrong never took away from the experience enough to to mark the game down. And and you know, I'm not gonna give away my score. You can go and read my review on the outerhaven.net it should be linked down below if you're listening on spotify go over to youtube and the link will be in the description i'm sure that jeff might put this video up on his website where his yep. review is so yeah it'll be alongside it so hopefully you know if you're reading jeff's review on analog stick gaming you can go and check out my review as well and uh yeah i think it's quite surprising because <laughs> I wasn't sure where I was going to fall on this game because for me, 2.5 D kind of action adventure games aren't usually my thing. Yeah. But I like, love... I remember seeing the trailer and I was like, yeah, that seems fine. Yeah. And then when it was like, Oh, it's coming to game pass. I'm like, Oh yeah, sure. I'll try it. And then I just reached out to, Absolutely. you know, and it's the sort of game now where and... I, I don't know if there will ever be a sequel. But if they ever made a sequel to this game, I would I would play it in a heartbeat. Like that's how much I enjoyed the the actual moment to moment playing this game. Two track two yummy. <laughs> um, but no, like honestly, if they were to if they were gonna do a a, um, a sequel, I think co op would be very cool. It would. Where each each lane that you go through is distanced to the other lane. So you'd be going through on your own lanes and you would see your, your co-op partner fighting his own lane of enemies in the background. And then you would team up in certain hubs and then split to go your direction. I really want, if I could get one thing from them added to this game, it really would be that endless kind of boss rush mode with, with just being able to do combat constantly. Like uh, maybe as an end game thing, once you've got all the combos and stuff, just kind of let people loose on the gameplay because that is where this game shines. Like they can do multiplayer wise, duels too. Yeah, absolutely. Gameplay sure. wise, this game is actually up there with some of the best that I've played for what it's trying to do. I think the gameplay is that good. Um, so yeah, I guess really that's where we will leave you on this one. Hopefully you've enjoyed our discussion and I'm sure there are many other discussions out today. So thank you for choosing ours and uh, we will see you in the future. Don't forget to check out both of our written reviews for our full kind of breakdowns and our full thoughts, because as you can probably tell, we do fall slightly differently on this game, even though we both like it. (laughs) Our scores are not that far apart. No, they're not. They're not for sure. So check out check out what the scores are and and let us know after you've played it who do you more align with because i'd be interested into do you align with jeff and his review or are you more with me and my review because because we're not that far apart but there are some key differences for sure so please go and follow jeff on twitter where can they follow you jeff uh it's uh analog stk gaming just because twitter's handles are too short Yes. Um, but it's analogstickgaming.com is generally it. I don't have a YouTube channel. Um, my my website's still acting as if it's like 2009. So <laughs> I'm still still you know pushing out the written word. That's all right. Your your YouTube is basically our channel. That's that's what's happening here. You are a partner of the G4A network. You will be on this show many more times in the future. You are basically the review expert at this point. You've probably reviewed several hundred games um yeah you know. i'm trying to remember how much i've got on there i think it's probably close to like 400 or so so um so yeah uh please go and follow jeff obviously follow us at g4a network now is our main page and also at eat sleep game which is where the podcast now lives on youtube um and we will see you next time thank you for joining us and goodbye